Day four of the trial of a school shooter's father is underway right now in Michigan. Prosecutors are presenting additional witnesses in the case against James Crumley. You see him there. He's being charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Each count represents a student who was killed by his son back in November of 2021. Crumley's wife, Jennifer, was found guilty of the same charges just last month. CBS News Detroit reporter Andres Gutierrez is at the Oakland County Courthouse and has been following this trial. Uh, what are we learning, uh, Andre, from today's testimony? Errol, good to be with you. It's all about where and how those guns were stored at the shooter's home. This morning we heard from a detective who said that James Crumbly was quite cooperative with them hours after his son committed the worst mass shooting in state history. Uh, he said he essentially gave him a rundown of where the weapons were in that house, including a BB gun that he said described as an assault rifle and that they shouldn't be too worried when they came across that. When the detectives went into the home and executed the search warrant, they found two empty magazine, some ammo, and a gun safe where there was a 22 caliber and a Derringer in it. Here's the only thing is that that gun lock, that gun safe was unlocked and that the code had never been changed from the default setting of triple zero. So it goes to the point that the prosecution's been trying to prove that James Crumbly was negligent in failing to secure those uh, weapons properly, uh, even though he knew that his son was in the throes of some mental health problems. Now, might he take Take the stand. If I think back to when Jennifer Crumbly um, was being tried, she testified and then was found guilty of four counts of invol involuntary manslaughter. So where do we stand right now on his testimony? Yeah, she uh, she certainly did. And really, since the defense doesn't have to really bring any witnesses, they don't have the burden of proof here. The state does. So uh, they don't have to call anyone, but it's unlikely that they won't. So uh, the big question, the $64,000 question is here is whether James will take the stand. Uh, and uh, if he does, it may happen as early as this afternoon. The state is starting to wrap up the case. It's likely they'll wrap up this afternoon. Uh, they've been essentially drawing out a timeline uh, with the witnesses they've called and they're now at the point where the Crumbleys have been arrested. Uh, they may end up calling a shooting survivor to essentially tie up, uh, put a bow to the timeline here. But the state is likely to rest today. And then the defense is up. And uh, for she for the uh, Jennifer's case, uh, Shannon Smith, her attorney, only called her up to the stand. Uh, so we'll see if in this case uh, James will be the only one. And if he if he does, we'll, we'll see what, what he says. And considering there are so many risks to his testimony, I'm wondering if the defense feels that there's anything he could clear up to not get the same outcome of his wife of being found guilty. Yeah, the biggest concern here, Errol, would be that if they put Crumbly, James Crumbly, up on the stand and he doesn't come across as remorseful, because that's what happened in the wife's case. Uh, Jennifer went up there and they gave her the opportunity to say, would she change anything if the, if you know, given now what she knows, and she says she wouldn't that she wouldn't change anything. And so that is the risk they run here, is that if they put him up on the stand and he doesn't come across as remorseful, uh, that may not play well in front of the jury. And Andres, um, Jennifer was the first parent of a high school shooter to be charged and found guilty uh, for the actions of their son. Just remind us the big picture here of why there's still so much attention on the father now in this case. Yeah, for, for this point, it just provides case law for other prosecutors across the country to mm. apply this set of circumstances if they ever were to see a mass shooting in their particular uh, state uh, or in their local municipality. And so uh, all this is obviously a landmark case with the decision uh, that came down in the wife's case, and she's going to get sentenced in April. And now we're set to see what happens to James. All right. We'll stay connected with you. Andres Gutierrez, thank you very much.